What made Cyberpunk fail? I haven't watched one of this guy's videos for a while. Okay, today is possibly a very important video. That's good. June 23rd at precisely 9.34 a.m., I received an email. This email was from a whistleblower claiming to be an employee of Quantic Lab. For those that don't know, Quantic Lab is a QA testing company, okay. an outsourced quality assurance company to be precise, okay. operating out of Romania. Initially Ooh. intended to be a game development company, that business model proved unviable at the time, and a transition was made to quality assurance. Smart. Quantic Hard Lab has a bit of a bumpy history. After bankruptcy early on, they were acquired by THQ Nordic, and then in late 2020, uh -huh. finalized in 2021, I believe, they were acquired in a bulk purchase by Embracer Group, which is an industry powerhouse. Specifics and timeline aside, Quantic Lab has operated as a QA testing company for some very large names in the industry over these past years. Right. Adding this in after the fact, it occurs to me that I should probably define what outsourced QA actually is. Let's say you're a publisher and you have a video game or a piece of software. You pay or people to make sure it's good. Similar. How do you go about improving it? Well, you have a variety of different options, but one of the most important things that you can do is have it tested by a team of people who are dedicated yeah. to finding when, where, and specifically how it breaks. Now, some publishers have what's called in-house QA teams, which is a... This is the... Uh, the Blizzard has in-house QA teams. Uh, basically, what the QA team does at Blizzard is... Um, so, yeah. And so, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to the video. Separate department of testers under the same corporate banner who fulfill that role. But many publishers and software companies actually don't have in-house teams. And instead, they outsource the process of testing for bugs, glitches, and other defects to a third party. There's that a friend is of mine what that was working one of these companies. Is, is a third party that takes on the responsibility yeah. of testing products because theoretically they are able to then standardize and perfect that procedure for maximized results. Game developers Man. have a particular skill set, and quality assurance is actually a completely different skill set. So we don't expect, nor should we expect, that the same team who made the game itself does all of the rigorous testing required to ensure that it's ready to ship. No. That is what Quantic Lab does. Right, Outsourced yeah, it makes quality sense. Assurance. According to their website, they have worked on titles like Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, Cyberpunk 2077, and a host- I'm gonna be honest. I think they should take that one off of their, uh, off of their website. Yeah, just take that one off the site. Because, like, you know, it didn't really, it was, like, fucked up on release. So it's, like, maybe you just shouldn't, you shouldn't have that one on there. Most of smaller projects as well. For today, we need to focus primarily on Cyberpunk 2077. Okay. Because it is one of the most high-profile examples in all of gaming. A lot of people but my know source that. was exceptionally clear that this kind of scenario is not isolated to just one game so what or happened? one project. Nearly everyone involved in video games has likely heard of Cyberpunk 2077. It is one yes. of the most famous examples of launch day failure in existence, and yet the true reason for that failure is almost a total mystery. Some will tell you that it came from corporate oversight, management failure, and shareholder expectations that led to a spiral of bad decision making. But my ex my assumption of why Cyberpunk didn't go well is because it was uh, it was going to be released during COVID. I thought part of it was COVID, and part of it was like their ego that like oh they're like oh well we made Witcher three. Of course this game's going to be good. That's what I thought it was going to be. Like, I, I don't know, but that was my assumption of why the game went badly. Developers themselves were largely innocent. This yes. is likely true to a significant degree, but is it the only thing? Others will claim that they simply bit off more than they could chew. Technology wasn't ready for this level of ambition, and this was inevitably it's a big going game. to happen as the marketing cycle spun out of control. That's there normal. are a multitude of theories, claims, and speculations, but He's got a today headache. I want to highlight the information I was given and put forward an entirely different explanation, <laughs> which will simultaneously shed light on an area of the gaming industry that needs radical improvement. Okay. This is where I have to clarify a few things. This is a whistleblower highlighting what may very well be illegal corporate practices while violating their non-disclosure agreement in order to put forward the truth. Wow. To bolster credibility and verify legitimacy, they sent a series of documents. I've been able to examine a 72-page QA testing file, Quantic Lab human resources paperwork, workflow charts, production maps, detailed spreadsheets tracking productivity, and some additional documentation from very early in the QA slash development process. These are blurred in totality because I'm fairly sure that they are confidential, highly confidential, and that- Do you guys believe it? I believe it. Yeah, I, I believe it. I believe it. Yep. Basis could be used to take down the video if I show them directly. My subjective opinion from examining these files is that they are legitimate. The annotations seem real when compared to actual in-game missions, employee names, mm -hmm. and dialogue. The timeline matches perfectly when compared to development roadmap. 
apps and the alleged issues, plus a few other things that lead me to believe that this person is exactly who they say they are and does have internal knowledge of the corporate and functional environment inside Quantic Lab. Okay. However, I do not have internal corporate memos or email chains and policy paperwork that mirrors the specific claims that they make in terms of illegal activity. That kind of information would almost certainly expose their identity Right they the wouldn't do it on an email like you don't type on an email like you know this right it's like so if you like this is why most people it's like if you're doing anything illegal a lot people don't use smartphones a lot to do that they use a fucking flip phone because there's less technology in them this is probably less the case now but it was more the case then and so, Ohio, thank you very much for the, uh, the 20 gifted subs. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, you have the burner phone. Exactly. Uh, and so, uh, anyway, you've got this. And on top of that, you have uh, other just common sense measures where you just don't say what you're doing in the emails or in, in like, the phone calls because you never know what's going to get what's gonna get you caught. That if showcased anyway. And the company allegedly has extremely tight control over what you can and cannot say with mm -hmm. strict and very aggressive non-disclosure agreements, as well as security measures to prevent leaked material. So the point here is, I believe the source to be real. They have provided okay. extensive evidence to support that fact and have made serious claims about the quality of QA activities at Quantic Lab. With I feel like this guy, like very rarely has he come out with like stuff that's been bullshit. Like, yeah, and it's like also, I think another bit of bolstering evidence for uh, Upper Echelon, this is Upper Echelon Gamer video, is that, do you remember whenever he did the video, we didn't watch this, I wanted to watch it, but we didn't watch it. Do you remember whenever he did the video about the celebrity NFTs, and he said that he thought that it was a conspiracy, and then the video comes out later on that was made by Fillion that confirmed it? So this guy's actually had a pattern of being right about this stuff that in mind, let's dive in. Think Cyberpunk about that. 2077, as we are all undoubtedly aware, would encounter a tremendous number of problems before, during, and after release. But uh -huh. one of the worst and most damaging issues, according to my source, was quality assurance. Fourth quarter 2019 is when it truly began. Project leads were sent to Poland, interfacing directly with CD Projekt Red, and the initial team was given their task. One small issue. That initial team was intended to be composed of industry veterans, those with extensive experience in quality assurance who understood the process and workflow. That makes but sense. But in reality, it was almost completely composed of what the industry calls juniors, who had less than a year or worse, less than half a year of experience. Oh my CD God. CD Projekt Red was not aware of this. In fact, according to what? my source, they had been operating under the impression that they would receive a dedicated team of veteran testers and most likely thought that this would contain some of the same people who worked on Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. In reality, those veterans had almost all resigned from the company, but CD Projekt Red did not know this. Even the project leader had barely one year of experience. And when we were talking about one of the most ambitious Why? games in all of history, that kind of inexperience is a problem. I would like to clarify the individual testers and managers, from what I am told, did the best with what they had. They worked hard, they gave it their all, but as we will soon discuss, there is only so much you can do when the deck is stacked against you. Ironically, well, they're not they're not trained to do it. It's not their fault. It's that they don't have the experience. They don't know what to look for as much as somebody who's been doing it for 10 years. I mean, really, it's just common sense. But I don't understand. Like, why would you do this? It doesn't make any sense to me. Team here, people have accused upper management of ruining the Cyberpunk 2077 launch many times in the past. Yeah. CD Project Red. Upper management inside Quantic Lab would prove to be an issue. Somehow, some way, Money? a philosophy... Like, I mean, but the thing is... So, like, logically, it just doesn't make any sense to me that why, why would this company do this? Because, so, like, obviously, CD Projekt Red is, like, one of their biggest, uh, uh, their, 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 their biggest clients. And also, like, not only are, are they one of their biggest clients, but they're also one of the clients that give them authenticity and, and give them legitimacy. So, like, why would you go and take your biggest client that gives you not only legitimacy, but also, like, authenticity and a bunch of money? Why would you, why would you do something to sabotage their game? Like, it, it doesn't make sense to me business-wise. It seems like this is a very, very bad business decision. And, like, that's the only reason why I'm doubting this a little bit is that I usually expect people to work in their own self-interest, right? That they're going to do what's best for them. So why would they do what's worst for them? 
Why would they do and make Cyberpunk a bad game willingly? It doesn't make any sense. Like, I understand that, like, you can come up with reasons, right? Like, money, uh, like, they didn't have the people there, like, whatever. But, like, none of that really makes sense to me. This is such an incompetency failure that it's almost hard for me to believe that it happened. That but I did watch the Concordia video by Internet Historian. So it's not out of the realm of possibility. Raw number of bugs would somehow equal good <laughs> performance had taken hold within the corporate structure. What? And this led to a bit of a problem. A policy became enacted where bug quotas were implemented for testers, the highest of which, pertaining to free roam, I think it was, was set to 10 per day per worker, according to my source. The I How many of you guys worked at a company that introduced some sort of numeric formula to grade your work and it caused everybody's work to deteriorate any government workers here so not only did my department have this problem at the irs but my dad's department had it even worse because like my dad did a, obviously like his job was more complex than mine so he would have people that would just fucking full send an application whenever they shouldn't have done that because the process to actually investigate a uh, an individual takes longer and it makes your score lower. Yeah, he just rolled it. Yeah, they just ran it down mid. This is the, the, I'm telling you guys, like having these different uh, like process analysis uh, fucking formulaic goals that are created by people that don't understand the work. This is so fucking bad. It is the worst thing that you can possibly have in a company. Wow. The idea was that this would drive productivity and craft a clean, polished the game. The opposite. The decision came from the top down. The absolute and opposite. In theory, sure, that might work with a proper timeline. But for something as ambitious as Cyberpunk 2077, something else began to happen. Something more sinister. In order to meet this quota, every single day, testers began to bombard the development team with thousands of small visual and performance glitches. Yes. Something tasked as negligible on the priority scale. It was not severe. It was because not people stop because you gamify work. You, you gamify the job that now this person is not trying to find bugs and improve the game. Now they have a separate goal that is to fulfill a checklist of activities that they're graded on. Yeah, that you basically you yeah, you take it from like farming gold to like doing daily quests. And they do their dailies and that's it to keep their jobs. And also like the employees, by the way, are not doing the wrong thing. Because the employees that don't follow this rule are the ones that get fired. So of course they're gonna gamify their work because they don't want to lose their fucking job. The people that are at fault here are, in my opinion, it's number one CD Project Red because you should be fucking you should have oversight over the people that are running a game that's like your biggest fucking game that you've ever made, right? They did fuck up. They should have been on top of this. Absolutely, it's their responsibility. But it is not just it's their responsibility, but it is not their fault. It is the executive leadership and the people that made these systems at the QA team that caused this to happen it is not the qa testers fault because they were given a set of criteria and then they were made to follow that criteria or their job was on the line i don't fucking agree with that like they're stupid should they do that they have to it's their fucking job man like it, it's just it's, it's just such horse shit important it was very small things all day, every day. Yeah, of course. A little bit of clipping on an item or a wall. Who cares? A little bit of pavement that had some texture problems, an audio bug in some dialogue, etc., etc. Instead of focusing on core issues with mechanical problems, quest lines, or game-breaking exploits being the target, a massive, never-ending fire hose of random, unimportant glitches were yep. being sent to the developers that consumed a ridiculous number of work hours to fix. But the vast majority of those bugs were totally irrelevant. No. no, they don't matter. Like, most bugs in video games don't make a difference. Because, like, the game-breaking bugs, the, the usually just the reality is, like, graphical bugs and, like, uh, you know, like, texture bugs and interactivity bugs. Like, you know, you walk on top of something and, like, your feet are slightly under, uh, underneath it. These are very easy to find. Anybody can find this in any game very quickly. 
but like finding the big bugs, like the big problems. And then also like as a tester, and this is like, you, you know this if you work in QA, the, the main thing that's hard for you to do is not to find it. It's to be able to recreate it. Being able to just see what's wrong. Oh yeah, I see why this is happening, but why did it happen? What is the chain of events that lead this to occurring? And yes, replicating a bug. And that's the hard part every single fucking time. It's the same thing. Like I used to repair computers. So like I know this. So it's so hard, especially in video games, right? Because you have like infinitely many more variables. It's so hard to isolate a variable and then remove it so you can use it as a control. It's so hard to do that. Don't get me wrong. Polish is absolutely. And, and by the way, that's what that's the difference between somebody who's been doing this for 10 years and somebody who's been doing this for 10 months. It is is they know how to isolate those a lot faster any game but what's more important is core functionality mm -hmm. and when you are required to submit a high number of bugs per day it gets That's harder and harder to uncover or replicate the important issues yes the ultimate consequence of this labor is spent on fixing surface level problems while the underlying foundation is left to rot because yep. the quality assurance team isn't really able to dig into it Eventually, no. after being bombarded by these... And, and they're not able to dig into it because they're being graded on how many holes they dig, not how deep the holes are. So this exact same thing happened to Blizzard. So you guys remember like 10 years ago or so, whenever you'd get a GM and the GM would generally know what they're talking about and they would tell you a GM joke and they'd talk with you and like figure out your problem and solve it for you like 10 years ago and some of them, the times they'd be in game, etc. But then what Blizzard did, they did the exact same thing, is that they created a uh, process analysis sheet. Uh, they created a uh, criteria. You're supposed to follow or file or solve this many tickets this many times. And guess what? What do the GMs do now? Well, they want to keep their job. I mean, shit, they want to keep getting paid $9 an hour by Blizzard in California. Of course they have to do that. So they are doing their, their game. It, it gamifies their job. And then, then, then instead of doing their job, they play the game. That's exactly what happened. Smaller issues for a lengthy period of time, hundreds per day, thousands in total easily. CD Projekt Red just stopped focusing on them. Yep. Quantic Lab was specifically instructed to stop sending them through the low priority bug finds and to focus on bigger issues. But the damage was already done and CD Projekt Red was already very unhappy. Short timelines, ambitious project, inexperienced. Because yeah, if you're a developer, like you know, like any developer knows, this is the truth. It's the same with anything. You're going to have little bugs and little problems. So, like, if you focus on fixing all of these little bugs and little problems, you will never fully complete that. There will always be bugs in video games. Like, Elden Ring has bugs. Every fucking game has bugs. Overworked quality assurance. It's a matter of priorities. There's a huge delay in fixing core systems because of an arbitrary quota. Well, that's a perfect storm. Exactly. The internal pressure here, again, according to my source, was intense. Everyone was cramming to get this done, and everyone was forced to ride the person beneath them to get more done, because the lost time and lack of experience had boiled over. But perhaps there wow. was a solution. In the summer of 2020, the testing team was expanded. 30 testers became 60 testers, and with that doubled team size came the expectation for double productivity. This turned out to be an absolute disaster. What Once was the rule? Where increasing the amount of people on a software development job actually increases the amount of time that it takes. There's a literal fucking rule for this. Uh, yeah, it's like it's mammoth something. I don't know what it was. Brooks Law. Uh, it might be. Yeah, it's nonlinear scaling. <laughs> Not quite, but yeah, it, it, it's something like that. Mythical Man Month. Really? I've never heard of it called that. Yeah, but there's there's actually this is a codified like a, a, a truth that people understand to be true is that adding more people to a software development job does not increase how fast it gets done and in fact it has the opposite effect because those other people that just came in need to be caught up on it Quantic lab was already struggling to fully staff all of their other projects not just cyberpunk 2077 so they were short on workers these 30 new testers mm -hmm. didn't come from other departments or games. They weren't industry veterans with any sort of experience. They were brand new hires, most of which had no prior knowledge of or experience with quality assurance. Holy some shit. Some of them, the lucky ones, got two to four weeks of training, but some didn't. 
And for all their effort, and they did try to succeed, new employees in a field like that are not immediately useful. It takes no. time for them to understand the field. It takes experience for them to overcome obstacles and become productive eventually. So a team size doubling actually ended up hurting the overall project. Imagine having a team there of functional is. testers that suddenly doubles in size, but the second half of that team doesn't, doesn't know, know what anything. the fuck they're doing. Exactly. Rather than just working on the project, veterans and senior employees are having to train multiple of their coworkers there it in is. real time as they try to complete an there already nearly impossible task. And once that chain of dominoes begins to fall, well, we've all seen what happens. Looking at these issues in tandem, you have a QA oh team God. that is either failing to keep up with the intended timeline, or worse yet, hindering the development as they struggle <laughs> against an arbitrary quota that only serves to overwhelm and bog down the developers with non-critical exploits or bugs. It likely yeah. wasn't the only issue that led to the launch day failures of Cyberpunk 2077, but if true, it was a large and contributing factor that put pressure on an already strained process. But well, no it's also like you have to keep in mind that it is still like CD Projekt's red responsibility. Like at the end of the day, it is their responsibility to deliver a quality game. Now, I, I think that you can look at this situation and say that, yes, it was clearly like assuming this is true. Um, it was clearly Quantic Lab's fault that this happened, but CD Projekt Red should have been on top of it. Uh, I know that we ran into this problem with OTK with the one-year anniversary event. We, we had a production company run our one-year anniversary event, and it was a disaster. You guys remember it? It was awful. Now, was that our fault? No, it was not our fault. We did not do that. But it is our responsibility. It's our fucking name on it. And at the end of the day, it's us that has to take the fucking hit. That's what happens, right? Like, that. that's what fucking happens. It sucks, but you've got to be used to it. Minus 60K, it was a lot of fucking money. Yeah, you. It, it's, that's just, that's the way it goes. You have to be responsible for your product. So I think it's also CD Projekt Red's fault, too. It is alleged by my source that during 2019 mm -hmm. and 2020 especially, though these practices still exist to this very day, Quantic Lab would make false claims Greek about got banned. team size to secure or extend contracts. Nice. This is where things get a whole new level of serious, because claiming to a partner that you will have, say, arbitrary number, 20 workers testing their product, but then having just mm -hmm. 10 or less, means that they will get a severely reduced result. The quality will take a nosedive. And this will also put an insane amount of pressure on the testers who actually are working, which puts Quantic Lab in a really awful position. They have a multitude of I'll partners, look at it some public, some private, and when the quality of work is degrading as a result of lower team size than advertised, that would be an issue is also what can lead to a strained relationship, which is precisely what happened with CD Projekt Red, as they allegedly noticed that the quality of results they were receiving did not stand in line with expectations, no. owing to the fact that there was a significant lack of experience. To counter this, Quantic Lab allegedly holds a strict and very oppressive non-disclosure system, uh -huh. a 10,000 euro penalty for disclosing any confidential information whatsoever, and the definition of confidential becomes very flexible. Workers could not ever discuss projects that they worked on. Name in the credits does not matter. Don't talk about it. Don't use it as a portfolio example, reference material, or mention your involvement for any reason in any capacity. Many <sighs> Are NDAs still legally binding if the NDA is protecting somebody from a, an, a, an illegal activity? I thought that NDAs no longer are legally binding if they're used to uh, obfuscate. Yeah, I don't think that that, like, I'd, I'd have to, eat, I'd have to, like, talk to a lawyer about this, but this is my understanding, is that, yes, they're not. So I actually don't, I, I don't fully, because like effectively what they did is fraud. Because like at a certain extent, doing a bad job. So like there's a, not in the USA. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. This was in Europe. It's in Romania. There's a lot of laws to it and, and it, they do things differently over there. But like, that's what, it, like logically, that's what would make sense to me. Uh, anyway, so I, I'm actually, I'm getting fired up over this one. Oh my God. So like, oh my, oh my God. Th they had to have said something about it. And on top of that, if there is a, there's like a, a, a spectrum of doing a bad job. And if somebody does such a bad job, you can sue them for negligence or for uh, breaking a contract. Like, if the job is just literally absolute garbage and you are being completely fucking, uh, you know, lied to about what you're getting, 
Yeah, they won't sue, though? I'm not sure. I, I mean, now that it's out, I mean, who knows what's going to happen? That's how it works in the construction industry. Exactly. Yeah, of course. It's, that's, what, that's the way it has to work. Management would threaten legal action, force employees to take down any mention that they had worked on specific projects. And these oppressive systems succeeded in one critical way, by suppressing information about corporate malpractice. My source also yeah. described an atmosphere where dissent is not tolerated. Uh, disagree? Sounds like my stream. Disagree too loudly, you'll be reprimanded and continue to disagree long enough or do even small Fucking arbitrary banned. things that upper management disagrees with, you'll be coerced into resignation, which Ooh. then stops any sort of internal change from ever happening. When it comes to blame, I don't believe it's my place to personally speculate. This person is the one responsible. That person should yeah, be fired, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. It's, just it's not hard to say. say. My source has some strong opinions on that front and certainly has a set of names that they believe are fully and holistically culpable. <laughs> But I think that it's ultimate, as I said, it's ultimately CD Projekt Red's responsibility because they should not have released the game. Like, they, they had to have played the game and play tested the game before it got released in its final state. Like, you can logically assume that that happened. So, a lot of these bugs happened. These are like day one bugs that were happening. So, you have to assume that in those first playthroughs of the game, right before the game was released, they must have encountered some of these bugs. I think you can logically assume that. And in the process of encountering these bugs, they, at that point, said, go ahead, let's do it live. You know, and, and they sent it out there. So, it is their fault and it is their responsibility for this. However, you can see how they got fucked. Like, it's not completely their fault. Like, they, they got fucked. Summarized as an issue with upper management of the company, their ultimate goal mm -hmm. seems to be spurring some kind of action to improve the company's culture and policy. Operating under the belief that all of this is precisely accurate, Embracer Group conducting some kind of internal yeah. audit would absolutely expose these issues and could very well lead to a better functioning environment. Quantic Lab provides a valuable service, if done properly, if. and that service is utilized by many companies in the video game industry and beyond to test their products. Not anymore. Better methodology and corporate governance equals better testing. Better testing means better games, and better games quite obviously means that customers will have a better experience. It all flows down like a river. So Embracer Group... No, it's the same thing with Blizzard. Like, a, a lot of the problems that people had, uh, of the people that had, like, bad experiences at Blizzard, if you guys remember this... We're people in like the GM and the QA teams. And it's like, guess what? Isn't it weird that the teams that have had these terrible experiences were the same teams that people perceive the quality has gone down with? So, yeah, it's like you're not paying them any money. They're, they're, they have shit work conditions. Big surprise, you get a bad fucking product. Becoming aware would weird probably how that works. be a yeah. good thing. Regardless, a well-articulated whistleblower decided to contact me. After examining everything that they gave me, mm -hmm. I decided it was worth covering. So here we are. Cyberpunk 2077 Good. may not have failed exclusively because of a faulty QA process. But if true, it was certainly a major contributing factor in the overall decline of that game pre-launch. Mm -hmm. Culminating in what we saw during December of 2020. That is to say, one of the most controversial examples of a AAA game launching in an unfinished condition. Plus I think Cyberpunk is the new gold standard, or really the brown standard for games. Like, if anybody is like, man, like a AAA game can't do this bad, and then somebody will always say, well, what about Cyberpunk? It's the brown standard. Yep, there we go. No Man's Sky? Yeah, but No Man's Sky got better, so like people like it be done i'm not sure perhaps embracer group or some higher functioning party can take a look at what's going on but for now this would explain a great deal of why and how cyberpunk 2077 became infamous for failure that's, that's awful it. if you want to support the channel there are links down below primarily locals and patreon to get away from adsense also odyssey a yeah. YouTube platform alternative there is another youtuber to check out merchandise social media and more but i'll cut it there and stop rambling one final note if they do decide to threaten legal action or take down the video or something like that i mean i'm gonna view it as a sign of guilt that's just my opinion, but yeah. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night. I would too. I would too. Absolutely. Uh, Cyberpunk's actually good now? Yeah, but it's the same thing with No Man's Sky. This is a really good video. What? I, there's a follow-up? Hold up, hold up. Oh shit, yo, there is a follow-up. Uh, there's a follow-up video right here. It says Cyberpunk 27 and Quantum Lab follow-up. Uh, let me pull this up. I, I, by the way, like, give this guy a sub, give the video a like. 
like this is actual by the way guys this seems like it's actual journalism so this is an update link the previous video yeah yeah let me link it to you guys one more time uh there's a video again and we're, we're watching now the follow-up video on it this just this this came out today Okay, a couple of days ago, I posted a video about outsourced quality assurance and more specifically, a company called Quantic Lab. We saw that. That story was given to me by a whistleblower who also allowed me to examine yeah, dozens of internal documents to prove their identity. My conclusion was that this person does have insider knowledge and is speaking from a position of authority, so uh -huh. I collaborated with them to create a video. In Smart. that video, there were three main points of interest. First, Quantic Lab had a team of junior testers working on Cyberpunk 2077 after being contracted for a quality assurance project. Yes. Second, Quantic decided to implement a bug quota for specific sections of the game, which led to a massive influx of low priority issues as inexperienced testers tried to meet that wash requirement. No. Well, and third, for multiple it. other projects, Quantic Lab was allegedly making false representations about team size during and beyond 2019 and 2020. That video has begun to make the rounds on gaming news websites. It started in Forbes, written about by Paul Tassi, moved on to be copied and pasted on probably dozens of other websites, yeah, from of course. Kotaku Australia to Screen Rant and beyond. And watching that happen has once again underlined precisely how flawed gaming journalism has become, and ah. requires me to issue some clarifications. I don't need to clarify because my initial coverage was wrong. I need to clarify because the media game of Telephone has started to get a little bit out Bro, of control. Bro, like, that was the funniest fucking thing. The media game of Telephone. I love that. Do you remember whenever Bellure made the video about the Diablo Immortal, the amount of money that it would cost to make your to make your game, your character, as good as possible? And he's like, yeah, I got this from a Reddit post. And then all of these news articles started just taking what Bellure said as if it's just the fucking Ten Commandments inscribed to Moses by God and just saying like, yeah, this is how much it is. It's like Bellewer said in his video, it's like if you repeat it enough times, it just becomes true. It's like, well, it's hundred and six thousand dollars. Everybody knows that. Well, because they said it. Well, why'd they say that? Well, because he said it. Well, why'd he say it? Well, because they said it. Well, why'd he say it? It's like, okay, there we go. It's 10 minutes of research. It's actually 540k. We're gonna watch that video too, actually. Uh, probably after this. I, I know that. ...with the story. I've talked about this before, but the way gaming media and legacy media in general, it seems, has begun to operate resembles... As soon as one of them posts it, then everybody else posts the same thing as if it's true. Because they're like, well, if they're posting bullshit, well, if we all post bullshit, then, uh, well, I mean, then nobody's really wrong. Because everybody's wrong. And if everybody's wrong, how could anybody be wrong? Children's game of telephone. One child says a word or a phrase. The next one repeats what they heard. Around yeah. you go, time after time. And eventually the last one in the circle repeats the phrase out loud. Anyone who has I played was the this person in telephone. They'd be like, cat, cat, cat. I'd be like, dog. I just fucking, like, I would just say some dumbass shit. Well, I would change shit up. I'd be like, yeah, there it is. Just to, just to mess with people, man. This game will probably know that you almost always and end then, up with And then, by the way, after I would do that, you know how, like, at the end of it, they would have everybody say what they said out loud? I would say cat out loud. I, mean, I said cat. And yeah, I'm like, yeah, I said cat. Like, I'm, I'm, play, I'm playing two different levels, man. Yeah. He little shit. Yeah or a completely different phrase and the issue is that incremental change with each repeated iteration leads to a degradation in the raw information yes That's a mouthful i know but it's true basically true by the time you. you reach the end of the circle no one knows what the fuck is going on and the initial phrase is completely lost Absolutely. that's a much more extreme but in my opinion also fairly accurate example of how media has come to operate in recent years and today i need to just jump right in as well the, the reason why media operates that way is because it's cheaper it's cheaper to uh, just w like fucking take some other media stuff and then just say like, yeah, this is true 100 percent and not even fact check it or anything. Uh, offer any sort of, uh, of commentary on it or anything whatsoever. It's way faster. Yeah, it's, it's faster and it makes more money. Let's go around and clarify a few specific things. Let's begin with Forbes. Okay. Credit to Paul Tassi. He was the first one to pick up on this story by far and obviously has his ear to the ground in the gaming space. So credit where credit is due. Forbes is I actually on point pretty regularly with like gaming stuff. 
I also like a lot of his work and wanted to ensure that everyone knows this is not an indictment of his abilities. If anything, it's a simple recognition that my rhetoric was misunderstood, which led to the first discrepancy in the chain. Most yeah. of this is perfectly on point, but one specific section reads, quote, Quantic Lab over-exaggerated the size of the team working on Cyberpunk 2077 in order to keep the contract. That's not true. Quote. That's not precisely true. And I hope yeah. that my initial verbiage did not get misconstrued that way. It didn't. While it is alleged by my source that Quantic Lab misrepresented team size on multiple other projects during the same time frame and period of time and beyond, Cyberpunk 2077 was their crown jewel, if you will. Yeah. And they had a full team working on it as a result of that. A full but utterly inexperienced team admitted. Yeah, it was the experience of the team, not the size of the team. But still a full number of team members for that particular project. That's the first link in the chain, but now every single further... And also, like, to be fair, that does not really change the story. Because both of them were fundamentally a misrepresentation. Publication that directly copies from Forbes, which is a large number, is going to misrepresent that information. There were quite a few articles that simply quoted the Forbes summary, thus regurgitating something that was not precisely accurate in terms of which particular teams were understaffed. Yeah. And even further, there were articles that then began pulling from the summary and misrepresenting who was the original party that allegedly implemented the bug quota. To be extremely clear, according to my source, Quantic Lab implemented the quota, not CD Projekt Red. Well, of course they would, because they're, yeah, 100%. That would logically not make sense if Quantic Lab implemented the quota. Or, sorry, CD Projekt Red implemented the quota, because if that was the case, then they would have asked uh, CD Projekt Red, sorry, CD Projekt Red would not have asked them to stop submitting certain types of bugs. You see what I'm saying? Like, it, it would not logically make sense. Why do rich fucking companies have not have QA of their own? Um, because you have to be really, really rich and you have to be working on like multiple like consecutive titles in order to 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 justify having an in-house QA. Like you just think about it logically, right? If you make a, a game every three years or whatever, like you only have like one game you make every three years, it's probably cheaper to just pay somebody to do the QA than to pay a QA tester for all three of those years. Yeah, it's incredibly expensive. Yeah, it, it's I mean it's just it's it's logic. Yeah, it's hard to specialize too. Yeah, it, it's just logical. Uh, you have huge companies like Activision Blizzard, of course, that are able to do it. I honestly, like, I, I love these videos. Like, videos like this make me want to, like, make my own videos of, like, stuff like this. Like, I, I, I love this shit because it inspires me to, like, oh, man, I should make stuff that is, like, meaningful, right? I feel like videos like this are meaningful. They're great. Do it? Well, we have... Um, we have some interviews that we're going to be doing pretty soon with some of the people that are involved with, uh, you know, the loot box stuff in, uh, in the EU. The, the reason why I haven't really done it recently is because the whole, like, abortion thing has been just, like, such a big topic. I feel like if we start bringing it up right now, people will do, like, this weird, oh, why are you thinking about this whenever women's rights are under attack, you know? And, and it would be, like, almost counterproductive to talk about it at this exact moment. So, like, give it, like, maybe a more week or so, it'll be drowned out. Yeah, because, like, again, like, my goal is always to win. Win, win, win. And so that's what I think is the smartest thing to approach the situation with. And uh, anyway, uh, we're going to be doing that very soon. Uh, we did get a uh basically like obviously with the, the whole ted cruz situation uh guess what he's fucking busy right now and so uh you know that's still gonna happen but you know we're gonna have to take a like probably a week or so to make sure that all this is, is taken care of and um yeah it is still going to happen though everything's still on the table and if you like this a true journalism nowadays yeah i i love this i think this is great because i, I feel like one of the biggest problems now right like with uh with like just the internet in general and, and like news, like media, everything is like, n fuck you. Okay, fine. Um, anyway, so like one of the biggest issues with like news and media, right, is that nobody knows what's true anymore. Nobody knows what's real. Everybody has like their own definition of reality and they live inside of those definitions and they never go outside of them. Now, these kinds of clarifications aren't major or story-defining, but what does have a pretty major impact is yeah. perception of motive. In the aftermath of Cyberpunk 2077's disastrous launch, mm -hmm. Marcin Iwinski, co-founder, published a sort of apology video of sorts, 
And in that video, he said the following. What every change and improvement needed to be tested. And as it turned out, our testing did not show a big part of the issues you experience while playing the game. This drew widespread criticism in the moment, and there was a Let mistaken sense of again. outrage I have seen with regards to this. The following. Every change and improvement needed to be tested, and as it turned out, our testing did not show a big part of the issues you experience while playing the game. This drew widespread criticism in the moment, because and there he was, was trying to blame them. It's a mistaken sense of outrage I have seen with regards to this type of statement and my own previous coverage, where some people feel I am attempting to whitewash the culpability of CD Projekt Red. That's not actually the case. Nobody, I stated. No, nobody. No, the only people that think that are idiots. Like and any reasonable person knows that. Yeah, like who who the fuck thinks this? Firmly in point blank terms that poor leadership and mismanagement largely contributed. It's their expectations, game. erroneous and damaging development timelines, developer crunch. All of this plays a part. And of course, on a basic level, the development team was aware. That By the way, crunch is whenever you get worked 85 hours a week and you have to sleep at your desk and people develop blood clots and uh, different other types of health problems. That's what they mean by crunch. The product was broken. Anyone with a brain was aware that it wasn't ready for launch. But quality assurance encountering this type of issue, according to my source, played a significant role in the product ultimately being released in a condition even worse than it otherwise would have had the process been streamlined. Now, very recently on Twitter, Legacy Killer HD has claimed that he spoke with CD Projekt Red developers, or at least one, who claim it's laughable that they didn't know what was going on or that the game was broken, which would seem to contradict at least partially the claims made by Marcin Iwinski in his official response. But here's the thing, though. It's entirely possible for all of these angles to be true. At About this, spoke to a few different CD Projekt Red sources that worked on Cyberpunk. They all refuted this claim. Uh... One developer told me, we knew about the bugs that people were complaining about. This was not something that was unknown to us, but we did not have the time to focus on it. We were crunching like crazy, so we were paper thin at the end. Both of these two things can be true. And it could have been that the developers told them to stop sending in irrelevant bug reports because they didn't have the time. So both of these things could simultaneously be true. Do you see kind of what I'm saying? So this is not necessarily a refutation once simultaneously bear with me but here's a bit of a personal theory what if the majority of testing was done on high-end machines i have extensive anecdotal statements of my own from viewers about the drastic difference between experience from pc to console the pc high-end developer systems create a sort of intrinsic bias in the process they do and if console That's testing was primarily outsourced you can have a situation where, yes, developers know the game is broken. Yes, management knows as well, but simply mandates the product be released at a specific time for the holidays, actually. Of but course. despite knowing the same thing it is PUBG. broken, they don't precisely know how to the full extent they could, or at the very least have significantly less information on the specifics of how, which is to say, less than they would with a more streamlined QA process. And yeah, they, that's absolutely probably what it was. Uh, that was a factor, 100%. Because it's the same thing with like Elden Ring. It's like some people experienced slowdowns in Elden Ring at, at, the, at the launch, but other people didn't. Because some people had like way better PCs and they were able to process, even though there were errors, they were still able to process them relatively seamlessly. You know, you'd have that problem with like Tree Knight whenever you were fighting him, or sorry, uh, Tree Sentinel. And like whenever you're fighting him and looking at the Erd Tree in the distance and Limgrave. Well, that's like one example. And I, I bet players had that problem at the beginning, but testing might not have had that because they might have tested it on like high-end PCs. Breakdown in experience as well as efficacy on point. the QA side may have contributed to all of this heavily. Many people seem to be viewing this as a statement of totality. If not for Quantic Lab, the game would have been great. No. But that's an asinine thought process, and my original video True. made no such indication toward that end. Real. According to my source, a significant breakdown in quality assurance contributed to the flaws that were then even directly cited by the co-founder of the company. It was a, Perhaps it was as a, a team combined effort. result of platform bias, I'm not sure. Here's the thing though, that video, even if some people seem to be negligently or perhaps intentionally misrepresenting or misinterpreting it, opened the floodgates of information. I have to play a delicate game right now because in the aftermath I've been inundated with messages and emails that contain a lot of confidential information. This is an Icarus situation, I guess. I want to put it all out there, while protecting sources, of course, but I would be sued into oblivion, right? It's that type of information that goes that deep and that quantity. I don't just have sources in Quantic Lab now. I've talked with people that do QA for Electronic Arts, Bethesda, and even leakers who have extensive internal information from CD Projekt Red themselves. And not just Quantic Lab.
Some of those sources describe a relatively similar situation at other companies, while some state that an army of monkeys, as they are referred to, not my term or my words, that was the nickname given at a specific studio. It might not be your term, but is it really a bad term? Yeah, I mean, shit. I mean, I played some of these games and I think that, you know what? Monkey sounds just about fucking right. Do low-level QA work while internally a high-level and highly skilled team tackles different problems. The variance between QA companies is quite high, it seems. And while some call it the worst experience of their entire life, others view it to be a simple stepping stone with no real controversy attached. From industry veterans to brand new hires, I have well over a dozen open email chains right now as I type this, with additional Discord messages, tons of them, and calls scheduled over the next few days to learn about the chain of events, more about QA in general, and get to the bottom of what the situation entailed. Yeah. Furthermore, I was given a screenshot internally of Quantic Lab's uh, corporate response to all this, and it seems that they are perhaps considering legal action. That is, of course, entirely expected. I went into this knowing that that was likely going to be their response, but I stand by my initial video, and I'm fully confident that for- I feel like the, the Quantic Labs thing, many companies, whenever they grow in size, because you can assume, like, let, let's, let, let's play a little bit of a logic game here. So Quantic Labs, probably after Witcher 3 came out and was such a tremendous success, saw a massive growth in their company. And you, you can fucking compound that with COVID as well. So the company became much larger, much bigger. And how do many companies handle that? They handle that by creating different, uh, different like algorithms that people have to do, different uh, expectations. It's like in, at the government, you were a one through five. You, you know, like you had to perform at three, four is above average, five is exceptional. So this is the, what, what probably happened. And so in the process of scaling up the company that much larger and to have that many more employees, they probably added in some form of quantitative grading system to differentiate the good employees from the bad employees. So what are the odds that this happened? I feel like everything points to Quantic Lab doing this. This would be the logical conclusion you see what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it makes sense that Quantic Lab would do this. Information will come Not out anymore. very soon. I was also contacted by a Romanian news network claiming to uh -huh. be the largest television network in the entire country. They wanted to interview me, and I decided to decline that but made sure my source was aware that they are interested in the story. It's not my place to go on major network TV stations for interviews. That's not what this was all about. And if we can get past the surface level animosity and emotion that permeates the subject of Cyberpunk 2077 to this very day. I, I don't think, like, I, I don't care about the game. Like, I don't give a fuck about the game. I think this is a problem with, with all games. And it, it's something that, like, needs to... It, it, it needs to have like a little bit more of a light shown on it as well. Like, yeah, I don't care. Like, it's just a video game because like the same thing will keep happening. It's again, it, it, it's not the fucking, it's not the golden egg. I care about the goose. This is just a, this, this is not a golden egg. It's a brown egg, but you know, it, it's just an egg. I, I care about how do we keep getting eggs? There is something to dig into here. Reporting on all this is actually becoming rather tricky. Many of the people I talk to with the most access to information have the most fear of penalty, yeah. and thus they request anonymity. My answer is always yes when they say this, but that comes with its own set of issues. People I don't like, like, people come to me with stuff like this too, right? I'm, I'm not the, he's not the only one. Like, this happened to me, especially with like, all the Blizzard controversy stuff. I, I, t I tell people, like, don't show me anything that you don't want me to fucking show other people. Because I, I don't want to have to pretend like I don't know something or like pretend like I don't understand something. Like I, I want to be able to show everything. And, and like any any data or like information that I showed during that, like I had to like triple check with like sources to make sure that they were okay. And I had to like redact things and, and all of that. Who want to debate the specifics on what degree of impact this had with regards yeah. to Cyberpunk 2077 are welcome to do so. I don't care. But with Quantic Lab in mind, my gut tells me this goes a lot deeper than that. To summarize this follow-up, Cyberpunk 2077 was one of the largest projects that Quantic Lab has ever been given. Apparently CD Projekt Red developers are telling another YouTuber that their role was minimal, which I really can't speak to at this time. 
but I don't care because within that role, whatever scope it entailed, there was a breakdown in process as well as expectation that led to a disjointed and ultimately inferior QA result, according to my source. When reporting on this, several inaccuracies have surfaced, such as the idea that the Cyberpunk 2077 QA team size was lied about. That's not accurate. Doesn't, it was other projects relevant. at that time and into the future where misrepresentations were made to secure or extend contracts. Another claim I saw was that the bug quota was implemented by CD Projekt Red, which is also not true. This was a policy within Quantic Lab only. And though the majority of the information stands as is, we will undoubtedly see quite a bit more come out in the short term, which will build out the story further. In I don't know why so many people have such a hard time with reading comprehension. I don't understand it. Because it, it, it seems so simple. It seems like you just listen to what they say happened, and then that's what happened. Because they don't read it in general. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just they're rushing to come out with a story. That could be it, man. Legacy's comments pen to reiterate. I I'll look at it. They read what they want to. Yeah, it's just like you don't gain anything from misunderstanding something. And yes, the at buck stops with the company that literally sells the product. Obviously. Me, you, media, YouTubers, anyone, everyone is incapable of pretending that there is some kind of magical justification that unilaterally explains why and how this game launched in a terrible condition, such a terrible condition. But whenever you have a disaster this big, something this bad doesn't happen by itself. There are a lot of people that came together to make this fucking nightmare a reality. Yeah, there are a lot of people. There were probably mistakes. But I, I, I would assume probably over 50 people, 100 people fucked up in the chain of fuck-ups to this happening. In a story that is rapidly becoming it's something much bigger, yeah. and a story that I will likely dig into far more in-depth over the coming well, I'm weeks, to see Quantic that. Lab has allegedly contributed to that process and also faces its own set of controversies going forward. Mm -hmm. My email is down below. It's a bit overwhelmed at the moment, and I will do my best to respond to everything in a timely fashion, but... I'm going to continue looking at all this because I believe there is a story far bigger beneath the surface. That's it. If you want to support, there are links down below. Locals, Patreon, Odyssey, Merch, Social Media, another YouTuber, etc., etc. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching and have a nice night. That was a good fucking video. Like, this is very good to see. And, and like, again, I, I, I really like the fact that he came in and he clarified some of the things that were said. Because this is what happened with Diablo Immortal and it was just fucking ridiculous, man. I don't think this is like some kind of like gigantic conspiracy, by the way. I don't think this is some massive fucking huge thing that makes like a, you know, it's a huge conspiracy, whatever. I, I don't think so at all. I, I think that it's just probably straight up people that don't understand what's going on and people that just are dumb, you know, like that. That's literally it. They're just dumb. They don't understand it. And you have the people working at the company that don't know how to... Yeah, it's a bad company. Yeah, I mean, that that's that's it. And it's also like some of them are not necessarily dumb. I think this is probably a mix of incompetency, hubris, and negligence. Probably all three of these came into play with, with this situation. You had the incompetency of the uh, more junior uh, developers and, and like uh, testers, which... To be fair, I think that's completely fine. Like they were set up to fail. That they're, they're, they shouldn't know things that way, right? Uh, overconfidence, yeah. Hubris or overconfidence because they already thought that they had released a really great game with Witcher 3, so they thought that they couldn't fail with this. And also negligence for them not to make sure that this product was at a good state whenever it was released. However, I don't think I don't think they self-published this, so it could have been the publisher putting pressure on CD Projekt Red. And, and like again, this is how like these video games end up getting released where there's like three different groups of people that are all fucking up at the same time and then you actually go back and you look at like whose fault it really is and you, they do self-publish. Okay, well then that that might not be it. But in general, this is this has been the case in the past. It's like you can almost never even figure out whose fault it really is because it's like a matter of like, you know, 0.1 degree to the left, 0.1 degree. And then you go out 500 miles and you're two miles off your fucking course. 
And I think that's what ends up happening with games like this is that, you know, little problems turn into bigger problems and you have mismanagement. I think Quantic Labs probably had trouble scaling up their company. And so they implemented these quantitative measures that turned into it turned jobs into games and it made quality lower. So it's it, it, it's it's like a bunch of different things together. Blame executive always. I usually do. Uh, because the thing is, the executives, they're getting paid a lot of money. They've got stock options because ultimately things are under their control and they are the ones responsible for them. Uh, that's it.